Woot woot! Episode 3! Yeah! You're here because you want more! More engagement! More delight! More fun! More learning! You're hungry for change and willing to take action! If you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. Welcome to the e-learning scenario design podcast with Anna Sabramowitz! I'm gonna show you how great I am! Let's take learning to the next level! Hello my friend, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a fabulous day and I hope that my little rants about designing e-learning scenarios and all the fabulous nuances and details and research that goes along with it and putting together good ones is going to make your day a little bit better. So thanks for tuning in. So today what I want to talk about is how to engage your learners, your adult learners. I'm focusing on adults because that's who I really understand, (laughs) I think. And when I think about engagement, uh, for me, that is, I think of layers, really, just layers and layers of strategies that you can put into a single module or single scenario design lesson that can really help you and your learner get the most out of that experience. So for me, the first, <laughs> the first engagement piece, which I mean, let's just say we can talk about gamification in some ways for engagement. And I bet you, if you went around a room of a bunch of, you know, instructional designers, e-learning developers, all kinds of people, learning managers, and you said, what is engagement? What do you mean by we want something that's engaging? What does that mean? And everybody would have a different answer. Some people would say, that means great graphics. That means great scores on a quiz. That means they looked at every page. That means they finished it on time. That means they went through it only once. They didn't have to go through it three times. uh, Or that they completed it all in one sitting. All kinds of stuff, right? Um, And yes, it Engagement is actually probably all of those things, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, today what I wanted to talk about is the layers and how we can layer um, certain elements onto our learning and design uh, of scenarios that will enhance that experience. And they're not actually very complex. Because one of the things I wanted to consider is that a lot of the a lot of my my reading that has been done onto let's say social media prat- platforms which are using gamification elements to drive interaction which are very engaging um, you know they're doing quite a bit of testing they're figuring out what works and how to how to fix it so that we are basically addicted now imagine if we could somehow leverage some of that I mean, a tiny little bit, right? <laughs> to to enhance the learning and make maybe make our learning a little bit, the things that we design a little bit more sticky, a little bit more addictive. I mean, that to me would be so awesome. So one of the things that I learned uh, about a platform called Instagram, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, but basically Instagram is where you post, people post pictures and you that's the only thing that you can do there is post pictures and videos and people subscribe to your channel your feed and then basically you you can log in every day as i used to <laughs> and look at all of your friends pictures and the pictures are sometimes of food and very contextual and sometimes of people's work things like that and one of the things I realized um, is, is that I really enjoyed going through all of the new pictures that, that were posted for that day. And I would feel, uh, you know, I would tap them to give them a little um, heart that I really like them. Maybe I'd comment. But what was most important to me in some cases was the idea of completion, that I would feel a sense of satisfaction. And it was very subtle. Uh, by going through all of the pictures that had been posted that day that I hadn't seen. And so I realized after uh, reading about that, that's a gamification strategy where you actually can 
capitalize on people's we are we are in effect completists i guess if that's a real wor- word and it actually is something that gives us satisfaction you know uh, let's say you have a it's like, kind of like a bingo board, right? We want to fill it. We feel like winners if we fill, we get all the check marks, we get all the numbers, we get all the pieces of the puzzle. Those are all really, uh, they're not necessarily drivers for everybody because not everybody is um, motivated by those things. But let's just say that there are certain tendencies that we have, and one of them is this completist kind of piece. So, when we talk about engagement, we we talk about, really, we're talking about uh, using get gamification elements, which in itself is a nebulous term because there's so many layers to that. Um, but when I think about that, um, I think about the fact that in any game, like there's some games that are very simple and they will, they will um, let's say, appeal to a certain certain kind of person. So what we can do and what we should do with the designs of our e-learning is that we take um, and layer on strategies that will attract some people and then we add more layers that will attract different people. And in case we're kind of stacking the odds, we're adding, you know, some bananas, we're adding some apples and Some people might not like bananas, but they might like apples and they'll stay on because of that. So what we're doing is we're basically creating a fruit salad. I don't know why I made that analogy right now. I might be craving fruit, but, (laughs) but what basically what you're doing is you're stacking these different layers. And I did talk to a gamification, um, expert, um, a couple of years ago, we had a great conversation. I, um, I, his name escapes me right now. I think it's Andre. I don't remember exactly. I think he's in the UK. But anyways, he talked about the fact that, you know, there are some strategies that will turn off certain people or some people will not even notice. Kind of like the idea of uh, leaderboards. And a leaderboard, really, if you don't know what it is, it's it's just a, um, a, a place to display... Um, people's scores and show you that like you know when you're watching the olympics let's say they have leaderboards which country has the most medals and for some people you know being in the top three is like so so rewarding they'll do anything for for that leaderboard but for some people if they're at the bottom um they will actually be turned off by that and demotivated to continue so he said, but let's say you implement a leaderboard and you start for some somehow start tracking points like quiz points or completion points, and now you display that somewhere. But let's say that before before that you didn't have any of those leaderboards, but now that you have this leaderboard, all of a sudden 10% of the people who were never interested in any of this before you've hit some sort of interesting competitive streak in them they want to be the top and now 10 percent are more engaged than before is that a win that's a win right that's a 10 percent win so then what happens if is if we you know that's one strategy and then we want to layer it for the people who maybe uh want to be recognized for their contributions like you could do another piece that you could do is badges where you could reward people for um, conti- contributing to a forum, or um, maybe after there's a scenario that happens and they've completed ten of them, and they've um, maybe they get a badge for attempting again and improving, and you can issue them a badge based on that. So the thing is, what you're trying to do, like I said, is to layer different ways of engaging different kinds of people who are motivated by different kinds of things. Some people are motivated by the continued pursuit of learning. Some people are motivated by scores. Some people are motivated by achievement like badges. You probably know those people. They have certificates all over their walls because they they like having those badges or um, manifestations of their accomplishment. They and And that's totally cool. Like, I think that we cannot be cynical about those kinds of people. In fact, knowing that they exist and knowing that 
a very simple way to engage them is to simply, you know, based on a certain uh, criteria, issue them some sort of a, even a certificate is actually in some ways a really good strategy. And the thing is, and I've used badges in, um, in, in many different ways, the thing is that some people, the badges uh, alone to them are a status symbol, and they will work for those badges to be recognized for that and to be recognized for that achievement, even if the badge itself has no value outside in the real world. It's simply a recognition of success or something to strive forward to. And people need that. People need those goals. So if you provide the badges up front, what you're working towards, boom. One of the ways that I've seen badges used effectively is in a uh, language app, a uh, language learning app called Duolingo. They use badges very effectively. Another place where I discovered badges and I didn't even realize it is, and this to me is very sneaky and very, and I, when I say sneaky, I mean smart, is I, um, I listen to audiobooks through um, an Amazon app called Audible. And I've been listening to, for, to it for a while. And then they kind of did a, like a system upgrade or something, I don't know. But they, they all of a sudden had all these different kinds of, maybe three or four different tabs uh, on the app on my phone. And I looked at the different tab, and one of the tabs was, uh, it had a progress bar. And the progress bar kind of labeled you, depending on how many hours you had listened, it put you in a different category. And of course, the top category was something like a master scholar or something, because you had listened to like, I don't know how many, ever many hundreds of hours of books. And the minute I saw that, I was like, wow, I want to get there. And then, <laughs> of course, you can see what I'm motivated by. And then the other piece uh, was they actually had badges. And the badges were really just quite, you know, like not as, um, like they, they really do mean nothing. Like it's not I'm going to show my mom this badge collection, but there's still some badges. There's about, I think, 15 or 20 badges in that app that, you know, for uh, reading all weekend, finishing a book in two days, things like that, that they've come up with that are really specific to the app. But there's a couple that are missing and I'm almost tempted to, to do the things that they've asked me to do just so I could get all of the badges. That's how powerful badges are. I mean, I don't even care, but I kind of care a little bit, which is really weird, right? Uh, the other pieces that are so easy to integrate that add engagement, other than just plain old context, which is fabulous, uh, great, you know, well-written story that drives you, you want to help somebody, like, those are all great ways to engage people. Context is key. I mean, I think you can have a lot of awesome uh, gamification and engagement elements, badges, certificates, progress bars, you know, you know, how far are you along? Are you almost there? How many more, you know, reads will it take or success scenarios will it take for you to, to achieve master level? But if you don't have that really good what's in it for me, when am I going to use this kind of stuff? The the novelty wears off very quickly, faster than it would if it was actually really contextual. Because imagine if something is not only very useful to you and you can see its value, plus it's fun. That to me is like the ultimate mix, right? And I'm sure you'd feel the same. Like if you could learn something while at the same time having fun, kind of... Um, not kind of, actually what Duolingo, uh, the language learning app has done, where you're learning a language and you know it's obviously really good for you to do that because it enhances your brain, it, it staves off uh, like Alzheimer's for a decade or something ridiculous like that, which is just, it, they should make language learning mandatory as far as I'm concerned because of that one statistic alone, but also just your language opportunities. And on top of that, it's super fun and cute and free. Wow. Like, I don't think you can get any better than that. So um, the other thing, and I feel like Duolingo, because of its um, heavy investment in uh, the gamification of that learning, is a great place to look and practice being a good learner and practice having fun. Because I think we forget that learning actually can be fun. 
because school ruined that for all of us. <laughs> so some of the things that Duolingo does, like I said before, is badges. It has a progress bar. It has really well-timed sounds that sound kind of like a awesome um, vending machine with a cha-ching, uh, which is very psychologically uh, stimulating when you get the right answer. Uh, you get rewards for participation and for what they call streaks, which a streak is if you do something, you know, develop a habit by doing something several times in a row. So they're they're using so many layers. It's fabulous. Uh, when you when you earn your your uh, streaks and your little diamonds for participating, there's a little owl um, that's kind of the avatar that he jumps in once in a while and says you're doing a great job to encourage you. Oof like a coach. Amazing. And then <laughs> you can actually use all those diamonds to either buy certain kinds of interactions. Like let's say you wanted to uh, do an extra module on the romance language or the picking up a date, then you can buy that. Uh, or you can buy a uh, savvy outfit for the owl. You can get him a gold tracksuit. I mean, this means nothing to... Um, the real world, but in the world of Duolingo, I actually did save up enough so I could buy my owl a sexy outfit that's a tracksuit made out of gold, which is actually made out of just HTML code. <laughs> but I loved it because I could do it, right? I dressed up my owl. And um, the other thing that they have is um, a really juicy, uh, juicy visuals. And the juicy visuals actually are something that I, I might talk about uh, in another, I will talk about it in another episode. And the juicy visuals are, there's, there's a little bit of this discovery and novelty that uh, a lot of apps play with. One of them uh, that I will talk about later on is Primer, which was developed by Google. And uh, it's really the idea of using some of these layers, some of these gamification elements, some of these engagement strategies, heavy context, heavy storytelling, and also heavy use of really great simple visuals. So Duolingo does that a little bit with their buttons and the, the way the interface is set up and even incorporating these cute little characters. But Primer scales back on some other things, but then does up the visual aspect of it, which also is one of those dopamine drivers, right? So here's what I suggest. You, um, when you think about gamification, start, start with one thing and then layer. So can we have do we have a really contextual scenario? Like, is it something that people will be like, oh, that's a good challenge? Are your consequences really good? Because that's really engaging too. Is is it profound? Is it is it does it make people uncomfortable? I, your scenarios should. They should make people feel good. They should make people feel like, whoa, I've got still a lot to learn. I better practice. So that context is there, the consequences are there, those are engaging and interesting. Are your questions that you're asking in this scenario provocative enough? Do people care about this stuff? That's true engagement. And that's the deeper stuff. And then add things like, do we have progress bars? Do we give people um, a reward for getting this done in one shot? Do we recognize people who get it done, um, you know, who, who go back and try it several ways? Do we reward them for the effort? Do we reward them for uh, letting us know if there's anything that they would do differently or how they felt about the scenario or how they feel it would uh, impact their daily work? Are we doing those things? Are we adding... Uh, badges are we adding um are we is our interface interesting are we delighting them once in a while with some surprises or some sort of a um way to go champ like those things are not to be undervaluated or undervalued because just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't enjoy those things anymore and let's not forget that our learners are just as thirsty for all that stuff as we are that's why they're on those social media platforms because those guys know that everybody wants to use that stuff and uh or everybody responds well to it and that's why they're all using it and those are all adults and some of them are really really 
like old already, like in their 90s. And now they're getting hooked on platforms because those guys are capitalizing on the fact that humans are humans and we have all these awesome dopamine triggers. So our job is to take that stuff, that learning, and just feed it back into our work so we can help make people's lives better. Even if after they leave, they're going to look at Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, In the meantime, we're going to make sure that they have a better time at work because they're doing their jobs a little bit better than they did before because we designed something for them that that made it interesting and fun to learn. So with that, I leave you and I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you next time. Take care. This is the e-learning scenario design podcast with Anna Sabramowitz.